What up, y'all? Today, I wanted to discuss a topic where I wanted to go over kind of like a scenario of during the trauma bond and into the devalue phase, and uh, you're, you start to find out how um, I wanted you to get an idea of how some of this ruminating and hijacking starts. Um, of course, it does start with... Um, during the trauma bond phase, they're going to, you know, of course, love bomb you. They're going to um, uh, tell you they love you. They want to marry you. All of these things. While you're seeing some red flags in regards to uh, some lies that may occur. Things that don't seem to add up about their past, present, or future. And, you know, their exes and things like that. But, you know, or where they live or some of the story backgrounds they tell you that you're kind of catching them in some weird stuff. So those things occur, but with all the love bombing that, that's occurring, you're like, man, this person really likes me. Um, I'm hitting it off with them. They're, you know, um, someone that, you know, I kind of, you know, like the idea of. And, you know, you give them the benefit of the doubt. Of course, they come at you kind of looking like an empath. Um, and uh, uh, so just remember as along the lines of that, what you'll notice is anytime they come back to you, they're going to come back to you in this humility, uh, coy, um, you know, um, uh, damsel in distress type kind of um, humility. And they do that only so that you, they, that you knock, you take all your walls down again and let them back in fully and all your boundaries again, you collapse them all for them because you give in to their so-called heart but you know they don't have heart that heart pumps blood but it has no love okay um so keep that in mind because when they come back to hoover um i wanted to get that out before i forgot because that's a tactic that they use um they always want to get right in the middle of you and when they get in the middle of you there's there's never a wall in the middle right it's on the outside so once you once you let them in you know, it's like let somebody in your house, you know, keep them on the outside of the walls, the ones that you don't like, <laughs> uh, the ones that are going to hurt you, you know, got to be careful. Um, so they'll come in and they, you know, of course they data bind, they, um, you know, they're going to mirror you. They're going to look like your soulmate. They're going to reflect yourself back to you. Um, of course they're going to, you know, do the cohesive co coercion they're going to start all these rules. You're going to be an extension of them. They're not going to love you, but they're going to link up to you. They're going to attach to you, bond to you, sex bomb you. And then uh, they're going to, uh, you know, uh, they're going to triangulate you with their ex. They're going to uh, look like they were abused in the last relationship. They're going to explain that out to you because that's what they all do. Um, of course, they say the lesser and the mid-range don't know exactly what they're doing. They're kind of unconsciously, instinctively doing this. Uh, and then the greater and the ultra know what they're doing. I personally believe that um, that's somewhat true. Um, uh, but it's all demonic. Um, even if they're unconsciously doing it, they're following the demonic construct, which is beast mode. Beast mode is not no love mode. Um, and then they're going to get no point in devaluing you and uh, breadcrumbing you and then getting you on this blame shifting onto you. And you're going to start. Uh, I'm going through this because what happens is, is when you meet them, they're, they're an, an individual that's loving and kind. And then um, they, you know, um, they, they kind of like refine these skills um, they, they've been doing this since childbirth, you know, and, and especially if they, they follow the construct of another narcissist or, um, I think they all, it doesn't matter where they came from. I think a lot of times they're, the constructs all kind of lead to one root, you know, whether they were a golden child, um, whether they had some kind of, um, you know, displaced childhood where they followed the, the lead of the narcissist. Um, but at the end or some trauma or whatever. Um, but they, they've been, 
uh, defining and redefining these skills, you know, their whole life. So they have this thing down pat most of the time by the time they meet you. Um, and so uh, they don't really, uh, uh, if you notice, give you a whole lot of their history. It doesn't seem to like line up. There's always bits and pieces um, for their current life. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, even their future, it's almost like you don't even get like, you can't get like a full biography. You can't, you can't get like a full demographic of, you know, either what was going on or, um, what, you know, would make sense when you're dealing with humanity. Uh, for instance, if you were to get to know me, um, on a intimate level, I'm, you know, I'm going to let you know my whole history if I can why wouldn't I because I want you to understand me so that you can um understand where I'm coming from I'd like to know the same about you and um I want to be able to connect with you on all levels right because I want you to be my partner and and so with that uh to be uh the best partner uh for someone I believe personally is for them to know your history through and through, know where you came from, know uh, what you went through, um, as long as you can be completely honest and they can be completely honest with you. So a lot of times what they do is they will data mine and get a lot of this information from you. But then when it comes to them, uh, it's very little and it, it's like really cookie cutter stuff and it's just bits and pieces and they just don't even seem to add up. And it's just kind of odd, you know, and, and anything even in their current life, it's like there's no... Um, it's like there's no paragraphs. It's almost like half sentences even. It's very, very breadcrummy. And what it does is it, um, they do this because they have to remember all their lies. You know, you're not the only one that they're seeing. They're seeing you. They're seeing, uh, other sources of supply. They're cheating on you. They're cheating on them. Uh, they, there's all these all these people that they're seeing, they got to remember names. They got to remember where they live. They got to remember um, uh, all the lies that they told. So if they only give you bits and pieces, it's almost like you don't remember bits and pieces. The bits and pieces just are, it's kind of like jargon. It's almost like word salad. The bits and pieces that they give you of their history, the future, the current affairs, wherever they were that when they weren't with you, it's such the bits and pieces start to turn into garbage. It's like word salad. It's almost like when they give you word salad when you get in an argument. Again, that's another tactic they use. But um, so all of these things are happening. Um, and uh, basically, they don't reveal a lot and, um, and almost nothing about themselves. And uh, then they start to withdraw, um, maybe as you're questioning and then, you're wondering, like, uh, you know, they're, they're not who they were. They're not the person that you met, okay? And, and let's follow this out. So um, then then the next thing is, is you start to say, you know, well, did I do something? You know, what did I do? You know, what did I do? And uh, and then you're starting to, to now second guess. Uh, and somebody said once, and, and, and I like this, um, because this is a red flag here. Whenever you're second guessing yourself, you might be in the presence of a narcissist because a lot of times you just don't second guess yourself. You either know you were right or you know you're wrong. Um, not not to be pompous or anything, but we all have, I mean, if you're a decent individual with good common sense and you know yourself, you're going to have common sense. I mean, you're going to have good intuition um, about yourself, you know, um, and, uh, and, and going through this relationship, you know, we definitely learned to hone our intuition, right? Um, because growing up under the control of a narcissist's family, you're taught to not follow your intuition. You're taught to do as you're told. And so this is, this is a big piece that led to some of this too, because you are groomed for the narcissist in your family. If you're not going to become a narcissist, then you're going to be supply. And so if you're a black sheep and you're on here, um, you're a black sheep, you're a scapegoat, you're a chosen one, you're one of the ones that was uh, built and, uh, you know, they knew at birth, the narcissist, the head narcissist, they knew that they tried to put you out, they couldn't put you out. So um, if they also knew you weren't going to become a narcissist, you're not the type. 
you have the blessed one. And so uh, with the blessing, uh, you know, sometimes comes a lot of sorrow, you know, and it, uh, it led to them grooming you for supply because that's all they could do. So they could beat you down and get a trash can, but that's okay because, uh, when you get beat down hard, uh, then you come back stronger. And what isn't, what it really, literally, if it doesn't destroy you, it's going to make you harder. It's going to make you stronger. It's going to make you, uh, you know, it makes me think of when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? I mean, not for nothing, but they did go through Nebuchadnezzar's fire, right? And they met with Jesus, you know? He was in the fire, and, and he uh, was talking. Remember, there was a fourth one in there, and he was the son of God, right? That's what it says. Um, and so, uh, but they went through the fire, man, and they came out. And that's what's what's happening with you. You know, they put you in the fire, man. Uh, but you know what? You're going to walk out. You're walking out. This is waking up is walking out of the fire. You were in the fiery furnace, man. They tried to put you out. They held you down. They chained you up. They, uh, they, they, they didn't feed and clothe you, right? That's okay. We took it like a man, took it like a woman took it like, you know, whoever I'm talking to here, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and for a lot, a lot of times didn't, didn't, uh, didn't, didn't say much, you know, we were still okay. Hey, you know, we are, we have been used to living hard, man. So it's okay. Uh, because, you know, we can handle it. Uh, you know, um, but anyway, they, uh, you start saying, you know, did I do something, man? You know, what, what's going on here? This is all switching up. It's not seeming right again. Uh, and then, you know, they're, they're not be, they're what they're, you think they're not behaving like themselves, but you're starting to find out they're behaving exactly like themselves. Um, but unbeknownst to you, right? So, uh, it's a, it's all uh, the lie and the illusion that they put put forward first is what you're believing. It's like the fairy tale, the fantasy, the mask, and um, and then they do all of these things, and then you're second guessing yourself, and uh, then uh, they get you questioning yourself, and then uh, they they control your emotions. You know, it's like basically you, you, they. They they have the one up on you, and they show you indifference. Like when you're questioning these things, uh, like where were you or what are you what were you doing or, uh, like when you you feel and you know they were cheating on you or lying to you about something or whatever you know, and and they're showing indifference. It's like and you're getting all emotional, so they're hijacking your emotions, you know. Because one thing that they don't do, they know if they give you uh, their emotional field and they start if they were to show you their emotions and stuff that, that they would lose power that way. But this is the thing. A lot of times I think that they talk in, in textbook and stuff like that, that they're doing this as a tactic. And I believe that if you can't love, then you're not going to be very emotional. You're going to be just emotional on the evil side, but without love is the key. It's key, man. It's key to everything. Love is everything. And this is why, they are so shitty because they don't have love and without love is conscience and without conscience it's like you have no joy you don't understand joy you don't understand happiness you don't understand um you know uh you know being a team you don't have any remorse for what you do and uh you don't have any joy uh so there's that's why they're always bitter that's why they're always you know, uh, they don't even, even, they even feel sadness in a different way. Um, more like depression and maybe, but I don't even think they have regret to be honest with you. I don't even know what, you know, it's like a lot of things that would help you to repent. They don't have. And then a lot of the things like love and joy and peace and happiness, they don't have. 
so they don't have the ability to repent so they don't have like remorse and conscience and stuff like that but they also don't have the good side of the loving kindness they just have the evil the beast mode they're beast mode man they're like the mark of the beast in physical form and this is what it looks like this is this is the mark of the beast um they show indifference uh and so then it makes it even worse because now you're like, well, now they're not even showing me any emotions. Uh, so then, you know, it's like they have the power and, and you have none here because like, you don't, you have pieces of things. They've been lying to you since day one. They're giving you no emotions and you're starting to look crazy, you know, and then if they're getting you in some kind of reactionary abuse at this point, then they can get you out in public and say some stuff to make you pop off. And unbeknownst to you, you're going to look like an abuser, a controller, an angry man or woman. And, and it's the opposite, but you know, out to the public, you know, the facade is, is showing different, right? And, um, they're opportunists. And so that's the thing too. You, they could cheat on you and, and not even feel it. They, they have no object constants and uh, they just, you know, out of sight, out of mind. They can just uh, forget, you know, that you, they're even dating you. And I mean, like they can just lock it right out of their mind. It's like, it's nothing to them. It's nothing, man. They just gaslight you. You're all gaslit up. And um, they make you dizzy. They make you, uh, you know, wobbling. They, you know, and you're now you're ruminating. Okay, and that that was my point. My point is, is this is this is how it works. And then the next thing, you, you know, then it leads to a breakup, a, a discard, and a new boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. And then you just you're just ruminating. Like, why did I? What did I do? How did I cause this? Why couldn't have I kept them if I would have? worked harder if I would have tried this why wasn't I getting any kind of emotions from them why were they showing indifference why um weren't they very passionate about the relationship why did they just blame shift me and what was I doing was I doing it right was I doing it wrong and this is how they get you all twisted up and it's really it's like it's like lies and it's energy and um and it's um and it's curses it's wickedness. This is what in the Bible calls wickedness. Okay. And so that's why you have to leave them because, and you can't even trust them. They can, you'll never, you can never like plan a future with a narcissist. I mean, how can you plan a future? You're, when it talks about building your house on the sand and building your house on the rock, I mean, can it get any worse building your house with these individuals? They could leave you tomorrow. They're going to destroy you. You're sleeping with the enemy. And you never know when it's going to end or what what kind of disease they're going to bring home because uh, they have so many love partners. They're not even love. They can't even love. And everything is transactional. So if you, if you become uh, hurt, injured, sick, or you're out of money, they're gone. And your intuition the whole time is telling you no, no, no. And you're saying like, you know, I got this. Meanwhile, um, just being in their presence is killing you. You can't be around them. They're demonic. They're evil. They're satanic. They're fallen angels in human form. I don't know what they are. But there's something from what we would consider the abyss or the pit of hell. And uh, if you find out, they say, uh, once you know, you go. When it comes to the narcissist, I would like to say, once you know, you, you you run as fast as you can the opposite way and you don't look back like Lot's wife. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, that's how bad it is. Um, because they're, they have like a tornado of bullshit destruction following them for the rest of their life. And, and this stuff is catching up to them. Uh, they, uh, a lot of them, you know, they don't, they don't live like a normal lifespan like we do you know that they, they they die earlier and they have a lot of problems and they end up dying alone with you know nobody around them and nothing and nothing to show for their life just in damnation so um 
That's all for today. I hope this helps somebody understand how they brought their craziness to your life and uh, how they screwed you up and walked away and uh, left you with a dark cloud hanging over you. But uh, this is just another way that they have brought... I wanted you to see how they brought this agenda to your life because when you do uh, uh, have a break from them, you kind of like wake up and you see how real screwed up you really are. And you're like, how did this happen to me? And so this is just another piece to the puzzle. But um, give me a like, a thumbs up, subscription. Peace out. Love y'all. Stand tall. And um, have a blessed day. Peace.